hey y'all and welcome back to flip's corner so in this video i'm going to be showing y'all how to use an embosser on fondant so an embosser is just a technique you can consider it an art of imprinting decorative designs using fondant or buttercream or you can even use them on cakes as well so today i'm going to use them on my safari jungle animals so i have here a zebra a giraffe a panda and its baby a lion an elephant a hippopotamus a tiger and a monkey so first i'm going to start with the monkey first i have some wilton fonded here in natural pink and light brown so one technique that i'm going to use is just using one color which is the light brown so that I can get my design of my monkey. So first you want to remove the embosser from the cutter. Then you want to manipulate your fondant. You wanna get it where it's nice and manageable to work with. If you notice that it's very hard, just keep rubbing it against your hands. The heat will, from your hands will make it easier and better to actually manipulate. Then you just take your fondant roller and you want to spread out the fondant. The thickness of your fondant is up to your discretion. Now you're gonna take your embosser and you are going to place it in the center of the fondant. And then you want to press down on it to get the imprintation. Now you wanna place your cutter over the embosser. The cutter helps eliminate the rest of the fondant around the edges so that you get a nice clean cut. And then you can still press down to make sure that the imprint goes through nice and clean. Then you remove the excess fondant from around the edges. And then you want to remove the embosser first before removing the cutter. If you have any excess fondant seeping out of the sides, just press it into the actual fondant or you can just cut off the excess. So this is another technique that I like to use with the embossers. Some of them come with indentations and little grooves that you can put other color fondant in. So for here, I'm going to take this natural pink and use it in the center where the monkey's tummy is and where the monkey's face is. Because I know sometimes we notice that the monkeys do have two different colors in the tummy and on the facial parts of the monkey's appearance. Okay, and now you're gonna use the same technique. You're gonna roll out your fondant and you're going to press the embosser into the fondant and then place the cutter over it again. Make sure that you press down so that you get the imprintation as you want. Remove the excess fondant. And there you have it. You have a two-tone realistic monkey. There are so many different embossers and cutters to choose from. There are very a big variety online on Etsy. You can find them on Amazon. They have so many different shapes, sizes, colors, themes, you name it. You can find them in your neighborhood stores. You can find them in baking stores, all types of places. Embossers and debossers are so popular in the baking world, especially nowadays. They really give a real, true, realistic look on your baking designs like cookies and cakes and cupcakes. Some people consider them stamps, but the real, true name is embossers or debossers. You can buy embossers separately, but you also can buy them with the cookie cutter as well. So now I'm going to design the elephant. So I'm going to take some white fondant and use black food coloring to, to get the desired gray that I need for the elephant. So I'm going to use a toothpick to add some of the black food coloring into the white fondant. I want to start off with a little bit at a time until I get the desired gray that I am looking for. 
start mixing it around and add more color if needed once you achieve the color that you want now you're going to use some flour or some powdered sugar to get the fondant to actually be manageable once again this technique helps the fondant from becoming sticky So once again, we're going to use the same technique. We're going to roll out our fondant to our desired thickness. Take our elephant embosser, place it on the middle of the fondant and press down slightly. Grab your cutter, press down and remove the excess fondant. And there you have it, a beautiful little elephant. Now we're gonna make this two-toned. I'm gonna use the natural pink for the inside of the elephant ears. I'm gonna use the same technique I did when I made the monkey. And now we have our cute little elephant with inside pink ears. For our hippopotamus, I'm going to be using the same color fondant, the white with the black dye. Okay, now on to the zebra. The zebra may be a little tricky because of the grooves of the stripes, but I will show you what I use. So I'm going to take some black fondant and I'm going to place it where the mouth area of the zebra is. I'm using my second technique to get the two-toned look. Excuse Bubby, y'all. He decided to put his little truck into the frame. Okay, so with the zebra, the zebra is really naked. You can see that you don't see any of the stripes when I use the white fondant. So here, I'm just gonna use some black fondant and I'm going to rub my hands together. I'm gonna make the eyes and I'm gonna make the stripes. The grooves on the embosso is so nice when it comes to the zebra because it makes it indented so it's easier for you to just place the fondant in the right place. 
I absolutely love working with fondant. I love how creative I can be with fondant and different types of shapes and themes that I can make when it comes to fondant. So I honestly don't have a problem working with fondant. Some may, some may not. Honestly, lots of cakes and different types of themes we see on cakes and things like that is normally fondant when it's very detailed. Some things you can make with buttercream, but it doesn't go a long way all the time with buttercream being that buttercream is um, melting consistency at many times. So fondant tends to hold up just a little bit more. You can really be as detailed as you want to get your fondant toppers and your fondant pieces to actually look very realistic and come together very nicely. So as you can see, it looks more realistic now that you added these stripes. Now onto our little lion. We're going to use light brown for the body and dark brown for his mane. I'm going to use the two-tone technique. I'm going to just roll around some dark brown fondant against my hands and then I'm going to take it and place it where the mane is on the embosser. Here you can use your ball fondant tool to reinforce the fondant inside of the embosser. So here I'm just using this little tool to make sure that it's actually smudged inside nice and clean so that I don't get any excess fondant on the outer side. These fondant tools you can find in your regular Dollar Tree. I found a three pack that came with the Dressel tool, this little pink tool I have in the middle, and the ball tool. It was a three pack that I found in Dollar Tree, so it was very inexpensive. The other fondant tools that I have, I bought from my neighborhood Walmart, or you can find them online. So I'm going to show you a quick thing that happens sometimes when you have an embosser. I'm going to show you how my two-tone technique can also end up in a fail. It can happen from you just not pressing hard enough, so that is a quick way to fix this. What I do is I just place the embosser back on the actual fondant, and then you push down a little harder, and then you remove it, and then bam, it's fixed. Now onto our little giraffe. Okay, so I have some golden yellow fondant here. I'm gonna take some dark brown and I'm gonna place it in the middle and then I'm gonna mix it together because I don't want my giraffe to be too golden yellow. I want it to have a more of off-putting yellow look like a darker yellow I use the same method when I make Winnie the Pooh as well So here I'm just using the first technique. I'm just having a one color tone of this giraffe. Like I said, embossers are great because you can just keep it as one tone and it'll still look very realistic and very nice. But if you really wanna make your fondant pop, I like to do multiple colors if possible. So 
So for my two-toned, I'm going to use some dark brown and I'm going to place it in some of the little holes in the embosser. This adds as the little prints on the skin of a giraffe. And here it is, our beautiful little giraffe. And here we have our little panda, mama panda bear, and baby panda bear. And I'm going to do the same thing with the two-tone technique. I do apologize, I didn't get to the tiger. I was going to do the tiger, but my little Bubsy had woken up from his nap. So I just finished off with the panda bear and I'll get back to the tiger some other time. The tiger, I would have to do the same technique I used on the zebra with the stripes as well, instead of keeping the tiger naked. And how cute is mama and baby bear? And here are all the designs. You can use these on cookies, you can use these on cupcakes, cakes, anything. I hope this tutorial helped. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!